us for yet another Bible study here online. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We love you and we adore you. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to study your word. We pray now, God, that you'll open up our hearts, our minds, and our souls, that we shall receive everything you have for us. We love you, God, and we adore you. We magnify you and we lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Praise God. So last week, uh, we were in 1 Kings chapter number 17, uh, dealing with this passage of scripture that relates to the prayer of Jabez in uh, the way of, by prayer. Um, and then, you know, this, this man of God having this awesome prayer life with God. And in chapter number 17, Elijah the prophet um, announces to Ahab, God has said there's a famine coming. Look, there's a famine coming. No rain nor dew is going to come in these years except by the Lord's command. So you need not worry. Well, you need to worry, but you need to get yourself in order. Okay. Then God proves himself, uses an object lesson, if you would, and uh, provides for Elijah by the feeding of ravens, dirtiest bird. But it was preparing um, Elijah for what was going to happen next. God then sends him, after the brook dries up, the ravens stop feeding him. Then God sends him to Zarephath. There's a woman there uh, who's a widow, her and her son. They're like, yeah, we get ready. I, I'm getting ready to, to pack up and get ready to die. And Elijah said, well, look, just trust the God in me. And, and, and God is going to provide. And so her flower jar did not become empty. Her oil jug did not run dry. According to the word of the Lord, he has spoken through Elijah. God bless. Because she was obedient. God bless. Then her son dies. A little later on, her son dies. She said, well, it, it's, it's got to be because the Lord is punishing me. And because he's punishing me, uh, you know, he has attacked my son and caused my son to die. And so, you know, Elijah says, look, God, I, I don't even understand why her son is dead. I, you allow me to come to this place allow for me to be taken care of through this widow, and now her son is dead. So, God, what are you going to do? What I know that you're able, so if you would. And so he, he prays to God in that way, and the son wakes up. He brings the son back to the mother, and she says in verse number 24, Now I know you are a man of God, and the Lord's word from your mouth is True. She said, I know it out of shadow of a doubt that you are a man of God. Okay. I, I know that you can get a prayer through. I know that you know the Lord for yourself. Okay. Now, before we go to chapter number 18, turn with me to the New Testament to John chapter 14. <clears throat> And, and, and I really want to deal with the significance of, because notice in 1 Kings chapter 17 that e Elijah prays for the Lord to, first of all, he prays that God would bless them or bless this widow in this way, that her flower jar and her oil would not run out, okay, as long as he was there, as long as you know, as long as God provided, she would be provided for. So he, he first had to have prayed about that. Okay, God, this is you. You sent me here. And so I believe in you that you're going to allow for her to be blessed in that way. Then he has to pray for this woman's son. <clears throat> Excuse me. This woman's son. He's dead. God, you're going to have to make a way. God granted the request. God granted Jabez's request. 
In John chapter 14, verse number 12, Jesus talked to the disciples here, specifically talked to the disciples, because this is the, the famous chapter where he says, how do we know the way? Well, Thomas says, how do we know the way? We don't need to know where you're going. I mean, we, yeah, we don't need to know where you're going. How are we going to know the way? He said, you know the way. Just, just trust me. And then Jesus says in verse number 12, <clears throat> Excuse me. John chapter 14, verse number 12. Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. Verse number 13 of John chapter 14. This is big John now. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified. I will do it so that the Father may be glorified. Okay? If you ask anything about that, may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. That's strong. That, that, that's a strong belief right there. Jesus says to the disciples, he said, look, you ask anything in my name, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, first of all, you're going to be able to do greater works than the works that I do. You're going to be, be able to do even greater because you are tied to me. But not only that, if you ask anything in my name, I'm going to do it. I, I got you. I'm going to do it for you. However, Folks miss that key part, and that is in my name, or in other words, in my nature. I can't ask God for a Bentley and expect God to give it to me if it's not according to his nature. God wants us to have nice stuff. God wants us to prosper and, and, and do well and all of that. Yeah, I believe all that. However, at the end of the day, if it ain't according to his will, he ain't going to bless us with it. There's no need to, to, to get all bit out of shape because he didn't bless us with the bitly. He didn't bless us with it. He didn't bless us with that. No, 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 no. He said if you ask anything in my name, anything according to my nature, anything according to my will. And, and not only that, not only does it have to be according to to my will and in my name, he says, I will do it, not so that I can pat my own self on the back, so that the Father might be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But notice, it's got to be according to the will of the Father. I'm not going to do anything outside of my Father's will. I'm just not going to do that. I, I'm not going to embarrass my daddy like that. I, nope, uh-uh. I've been with him too long. I've I, I been with him too long. And, and what I do, I do because of my father. What the, the reason I'm here is because of my father, to glorify my father. Everything that Jesus did while he was on earth, and even when he went back to heaven, was to glorify the father. At the end of the day, it's to glorify the father. I don't want to do anything that's going to glorify myself and I can't glorify my father. I can't glorify my daddy. I can't point the glory back to my father. He said all of it, all of the glory goes back to my father. So if you're going to ask me to do something, I need you to make sure that it meets those two qualifications. It's in my name, in my nature, and it's going to bring glory to my father. Now, if it ain't in my name and it doesn't bring glory to my father, then you forget it. <laughs> you need not even look for it. If it doesn't line up with what daddy wants done, if it doesn't line up with what my father wants done, excuse me, you, you, can, you can forget it. You, you may well consider it a wrap. No, sir. Uh-uh. Because whatever I do, I do it according to my father so that he may get the glory. So when we are praying, we are praying, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Let your will be done. And I'm going to ask some stuff in the name of Jesus. In the name, Father, I need you to do X, Y, Z. In your name, I pray. But it's according to God's nature. It's according to his will. It's according to his way. Okay? Now turn with me to 1 John. We looked at the Gospel of John, chapter number 14. Now if you turn with me to 1 John. Chapter number five. First John chapter number five. What uh, the first letter that was written to those uh, that would receive it. Verse number 13 we'll start with. Excuse me. Verse number 13 of 1 John chapter number 5. And the word says, I have written these things to you so that I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you may know that you have eternal life. That's why I've written these things, so that you'll know. There's not a shadow of a doubt. You will know. This is the confidence we have before him. Verse number 14, 1 John chapter number 5. This is the confidence we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse number 15. And if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. Whew. Oh, man, that's powerful. We have confidence before him. We ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He, he hears us. Okay, he hears us according to his will. Gotta be according to his will. That's the key part. Gotta be according to his will. Okay, <laughs> it is so funny to me how our children, especially our boys, because they have learned us and they continuously learn us. I mean, they're, they're not anything, but you know, they're only 13, 10, and 8. So they continuously learn us. They continue to, uh, to 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 learn about us and, and and things of that nature as as parents. But it is so funny to hear them talking amongst themselves about certain things, and they will say things that we would say, but we haven't said it yet. It's almost like a, um, yeah, daddy's gonna say X Y Z, so. I can tell you before he even has a chance to say anything, okay? Or And, and so <laughs> they may ask a certain thing, one may ask something, and the other one responds. Now, you know that ain't going to let you do that. I, I, I already know it's a no. You, I don't even know why you asking daddy that. You know what he's going to say. You know he's going to say no, okay? Or, if, you know, if they get ready to go ask Megan, you know Bobby's going to tell you no. You you know what Bobby's going to say to you. So I don't even know why you're asking, okay? In other words, is it according to their will? Is it according to what they have taught us? No. So you know what the answer is. In the same way, we have the confidence before him, before Christ, because we know that we have eternal life. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Just the mere fact that it's according to his will, he's going to hear me. He's, he's, he's going to he not just listen, but he's going to hear and say, you know what? That, that's according to my will. That, that's 2 that's Chronicles. Excuse me. Put your thumb right there. 
turn with me right back to the Old Testament just real quick. Just really, really quick. I promise you, it's it going to be real quick. But notice, according to his will. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple of sacrifice. If I shut the sky so there is no rain, or if I command the grasshopper to consume the land, or if I send pestilence on my people, and my people who bear my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. My eyes will now be open and my ears attentive to prayer, to prayer from this place. And I have now chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there at all times. But notice, God does not hear until we do the other part. Until we do what is according to his will. Okay? So, go back to 1 John, chapter number 5. This is the confidence we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. It, he at least hears us because we're asking according to his name. Then verse 15, and if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. We have a confidence. You know what? It's according to his will, so he's going to provide it. And I'm going to trust that he's going to provide. He's going to do what he said he was going to do. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. That's a good thing to know right there. If I ask anything in his name, I got to have confidence that he's going to provide. This is, Note, this is the same John that said that Jesus told them, uh, excuse me, uh, in, the, in the gospel of John while he was with them, Look, you 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 can ask anything of me, and I'm going to provide it for you. Uh, I I'm going to provide it for you. Okay, I I'm going to give you what you ask according to my will, according to my name. Got to be in my name in my will according to that which I have commanded for you. Okay, now. When we keep that in mind, asking anything in his name, that a note, this is when we get to the New Testament, it puts in a different perspective when we think about Elijah and how he asked God, he prayed to God to raise that boy to life, and he was raised to life. It was according to his will and to God's way. Now, so turn back with me to 1 Kings chapter number 17. Because in chapter number 17, 1 Kings, chapter number 17, 1 Kings 17, verse number 20, after they got back upstairs, then he cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow I am staying with by killing her son? Then he stretched himself out over the boy three times. He cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, my God. Please let this boy's life come into him again, okay? I'm, I'm praying. Lord, let his life come into him again. Not for my sake, but for your glory, so that you would get the glory, the honor, and all of the praise. According to your will. According to your will and according to your way, okay? Now, at the beginning of chapter number 17, Elijah announces the famine. That's at the beginning of chapter number 17. Then he goes through um, he, he, he goes through being fed by ravens, going to Zarephath, being fed by this, being provided for by this widow. And then uh, the, the son dying, and this is all during no rain, okay? Still no rain on the land. Still no rain. 
So we get to chapter number 18, 1 Kings, chapter number 18. Excuse me. Chapter number 18. First case. Chapter number 18. And it reads, After a long time, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. The third year? They had already three years? Good gracious life. Go and present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the surface of the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. The famine was so severe in Samaria. Ahab called for Obadiah. Now, excuse me, in verse number one, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. In the third year, go back to Ahab, tell him I'm about to send some rain. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. At the same time, Ahab had called for Obadiah, who was in charge of the palace. Obadiah was a man who greatly feared the Lord and took a hundred prophets and hid them, 50 men to a cave and provided them with food and water when Jezebel slaughtered the Lord's prophets. Ahab said to Obadiah, now before we get there, notice, while, although Obadiah was working in the king's palace, Obadiah had found favor with both God and man. Because while he was working in the king's palace, Obadiah also feared the Lord. And because he feared the Lord, when Queen Jezebel was slaughtering the Lord's prophets and getting rid of everybody, Obadiah took it upon himself and he took a hundred prophets and hid them, 50 men to a cave. He said, y'all stay right here. I want to protect y'all as best I can, okay? God has given me this means to protect y'all, so I want to protect you as best I can, okay? So Ahab, in verse number five of 1 Kings chapter number 18, Ahab said to Obadiah, go throughout the land to every spring and to every wadi. Perhaps we'll find grass so we can keep the horses and mules alive and not have to destroy any cattle. In other words, Ahab still is not trying to get his heart in right with God. He's still not trying to change in order to follow after God. No, he's worried about his cattle. He's worried about the horses. He's worried about the mules. And so he says to, to Obadiah, he says, look, you, you, look go, go see if you find any water from anywhere. Anywhere. It, it, it might be some water, okay? It, it, it might be some water anywhere. Go see what you can find. If you find any water anywhere, okay? It, it's been three years now. And, this is Elijah in the third year. It's been three years now. This water's dried up. I, but, but see if you can find another spring somewhere over dying. Verse number six, they divided the land between them in order to cover it. Okay? You go that way. I'm going to go this way. You go that way. And you, you, we, we're going to divide this land up so we can go find it. Uh, Ahab went one way by himself. And Obadiah went the other way by himself. Verse number seven, while Obadiah was walking along the road, Elijah suddenly met him. Oh. Elijah suddenly met him. When Obadiah recognized him, he fell face down and said, is it you, my Lord Elijah? Nobody seen you, talk to you in about three years, man. Where you been? How you doing? It, and, and is it you? I just want to know, is it my Lord Elijah? Is it, is it the one that, that they call Elijah? Verse number eight, it is I, he replied. Go tell your Lord, Elijah is here. Go tell him. I'm here. 
Verse number nine. But Obadiah said, what sin have I committed that you are handing your servant over to Ahab to put me to death? Now, before we go into verse 10, what reads that without reading the rest and you think, huh? What are you talking about, man? What does, what, what, what do you mean? The, the sentence, you trying to put me to death. Like, ain't nobody said nothing about dying. Nobody said anything about killing you with a sword. Nobody said anything about poisoning you. Like, what are you talking about? Verse number 10 begins to explain it. As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my Lord, talking about Ahab, has not sent someone to search for you. When they said he is not here, he made that kingdom or nations swear they had not found you. Now, look at here. Uh, Elijah, I consider you the Lord of, uh, I consider you the prophet of the most high God. Okay? I consider that you have heard from the Lord. I clap, I consider that. I know that you heard it. I know you talked to the Lord. But Elijah, you tried to get me killed. I clear you tried to get me killed. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you how you tried to get me killed. Do you know Ahab been looking for you? He put out a bounty on your head. He been trying to look for you for the last three years. And nobody knew where you were. They couldn't find you. And so he told that nation and that kingdom to swear that they didn't know where you were. That, look, that, man, I'm trying to tell you, you are trying to get me killed. Because if I go back and I tell Ahab that you are here and that I saw you and did you don't come with me? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to die. Because he already made them nations and kingdom that said they hadn't seen you, swear that they hadn't seen you, and then you want me to just go show up and say, Ahab, guess what? I saw Elijah. You ain't seen no Elijah. Ain't nobody seen Elijah in three years. And then you talk about you seen Elijah. The, the servants kill him. You, Elijah, you try to get me killed. And so he says in verse number 11, now you say, go tell your Lord, Elijah is here, but when I leave, verse number 12, the spirit of the Lord may carry you off to some place I don't know. Then when I go report to Ahab and he doesn't find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. And it's not that I don't fear the Lord. It's not even that I don't reverence you. It's that I'm just trying to live a little bit longer. Verse number 13, 1 Kings chapter 18, wasn't it reported to my Lord what I did with Jezebel slaughtered the Lord's prophet? Don't you know I've been serving the Lord since my youth? And don't you know what I did? I hid a hundred of the prophets of the Lord, 50 men to a cave, and I provided them with food and water. Now you say, go tell your Lord, Elijah's here. He will kill me. Then Elijah said, as the Lord of armies lives, in whose presence I stand, today I will present myself to Ahab. You need not worry, Obadiah. I, I guarantee you, son, I'm a man of my word. You know that I'm a prophet of the Lord. Go tell him I'm here, and I'm going to stay right here. I promise you. I'm not going anywhere. And the Spirit of the Lord is not going to take me anywhere either. I'm going to be right here. Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. Then Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is that you, the one ruining Israel? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That you? Oh. Oh, oh, now you show up. You done ruined Israel. 
because it's been, ain't been no rain, Mr. Ain't gonna be no, ain't gonna be no rain or no dew on it in the mornings until the Lord say so. Oh, but you, you, you destroy it, then you got out of town. You got some water from somewhere. We over here struggling, and you, you ain't you uh, one of the Israelites? And, and you made them suffer after you told them there would be no rain or dew? And here we are in year number three, and we still dealing with no rain or dew. But, but, but you supposed to be the prophet of the Lord. You, yeah, you ruined it, Israel. And we're going to stop right there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This coming Tuesday, next week is the week of Thanksgiving. Praise God. And so this coming Tuesday, we'll have all our Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. Not next Wednesday, the 27th. But this coming Tuesday, the 26th, 7 o'clock p.m., right here online, we look forward to going right back to 1 Kings chapter number 18 and going a little bit further as we uh, deal and, and, and still dealing with this importance of prayer and why it is so important. This coming Sunday is the fourth Sunday of November. I pray that you will be able to join us either in person or online as we shall worship the Lord together. I encourage you, if you are joining us in person, that you wear your blue on this coming uh, Sunday as we bring awareness to diabetes. November is not only World Prematurity uh, Month and uh, day is the 17th of November, uh, National uh, Epilepsy Awareness Month and National Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, but it is also National Diabetes Awareness Month. And so this coming Sunday, we encourage you to put on your blue so that we can uh, unite together uh, in, uh, in our show of unity as we bring a, a mu as much awareness as possible to uh, uh, diabetes and how it affects especially, especially the black race. Oh, my gracious, especially the black race. So I encourage you to wear your blue on this coming Sunday if you're joining us. And then on Tuesday, Tuesday, just want to buy you, Tuesday, 7 o'clock p.m., we'll be right back here online as we dig further into 1 Kings chapter number 18. Amen. Father, we thank you so very much for your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, just reminding us of the importance of prayer and having a strong prayer life with you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to keep us from her arm, see that I see danger. As we go into this holiday season uh, and Thanksgiving, Father, I pray, God, that you will keep the hearts and minds of those that have lost loved ones, especially this year. I pray, God, that you will keep their hearts and their minds as they gather around tables, Lord. Father, or, or they do different things or not do different things, I pray that you'll keep their hearts and their minds in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you and we praise you. We magnify you and we lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. God, every single thing done and all those that believe said, Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lord, I want to live for thee every day and I let thy spirit be with me it is safe Big power. Keep my heart and keep my head. Keep my soul, I pray. Keep my tongue to speak thy praise keep me 